Greetings, dear viewers! I'm Coil Quick Card, and welcome back to Metroid Prime. We are here in the observatory, and we're going to start with more pirate data. Log 10.107.7, or 401.7. Phase on mining is underway. Several garrisons have been established, and terraforming of the Chozo Ruins is underway. Security systems are operational, and science team continues to make progress in their biotech research. The Fendrana Drifts have proven to be an optimal location for research headquarters, and soon it will be joined by a fully operational command base in Starport. If command's predictions are half true, we shall rise to dominance in this sector within a Deca cycle. Truly, these are glorious times. More pirate data. Log 10.299.2 Spans of the spiral sector detected a massive energy spike emanating from a Wanderer-class planet identified as Talon 4. Scout reconnaissance was immediately dispatched to the center of the spike, a land mass at heading mark 40.08.02, returning with planetary samples and atmospheric imagery. Analysis shows the energy source to be an unstable radioactive material of enormous potential. We are unable to form an accurate risk assessment at this time, but we are unlikely to find an energy source this powerful again. Analysis will continue, but currently Talon 4 appears to be a viable secondary headquarters. Hmm. So, after we uh, blew up most of their facilities on Zebus, they looked for another primary base of operations, and they ended up being attracted to this planet primarily because of the energy sources that it had available. This is a holographic imaging observatory facility. My goal is to turn everything here on so I can reach the top of the uh, the top of the room. It is extremely important. In fact, it is absolutely vital that I reach the top of this room. Um whoop. Okay, that one I'm actually going to blame on the controller. Let's see. How... How do I reach? Is it low enough that I can get up there? It is, okay. It looked a little high, but it was actually doable. Very good. Now we have to start interacting with the stuff down here. Oh wait, these are spinners. Okay. That's spinner one, spinner two, I don't know if I'm actually going to pull off the 100% in this game or not, there are a lot of really obscure little things that are easily missed, but by god, I am... I am running checklists, I am being extremely careful, extremely thorough. I may actually succeed in this being the first time I have ever gotten a hundred percent at Metroid Prime. I'm holding my fingers. So, a couple things here are scammable. Uh, Let's see. There we go. Uh, that's Planet Talon 4, mass 5.1 trillion teratons. Ecological studies indicate that Talon 4 was a biological paradise prior to the impact of an extraterrestrial object. 
what remains of the biosphere is slowly fading due to exposure to phazon radiation. At current rate of decay, Kalon 4 will be a barren class, uh, class 13 wasteland in approximately 25 years. That's a shockingly fast decay. And here is planet Zebus. Uh, planet's crust is primarily earth, uh, earthic ore, making it ideal for subterranean construction. A class 19 planet, Zebus is inhospitable to most bioforms. The world was considered unremarkable until it became a base for space pirate forces. Uh, planet Bylum. Ah, atmosphere rife with uh, a sentient gaseous global exterminator virus. Yeah, that's a damn good reason to have that planet uh, quarantined. Holy crap. Now, despite what the visual there seems to suggest, I am almost 100% certain uh, that Zebus and Talon 4 are not in the same solar system. At least, I certainly hope they aren't. Um, okay. Up here. Good. And... That lock usually means, yep, save point. Excellent. Okay. And that means I can finally access a severely good upgrade. The Super Missile. This powerful attack uses five missiles. Using the power beam, press and hold A to fire, then press Y to fire. So, basically, it works like this. Boom. And now, I have to backtrack for a sec. And I need to do that... Because if you remember on the uh, last episode, yeah, it's over that way, uh, back in the research lab, there was a thing that clearly had a power-up in it. We, I mean, we could absolutely hear it. Uh, don't mind me, gentlemen. Uh, excuse me. Thank you. Thank you. We were able to hear that it had a power-up in it. Nope, 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 nope. So, what did it say this was made of? Cordite. Well, guess what? Cordite is weak against super missiles. Missile expansion acquired. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, I don't particularly care if I take that damage. All right, are the space pirates going to be respawned? Doesn't sound like it, because I don't hear their music. And I really didn't care how much damage I took, because, yeah, save point heals me. Still, that's good. That That is extremely good. Okay. Please die. Thank you. Ugh, more Berg mites. Hello! Goodbye! Alright, this is a 
tower? Where does this go? Access to control tower granted. Okay, so this isn't like a completely new region. This is just a big fancy loading zone, I guess. Understandable. Okay, get ready. Nope. Come on. Come on. Gonna get you. Gonna get you. Alright, I hear more of you. Gotcha. Alright, we got aerial pirates. Alright, I think I already scanned them earlier. Yes, I did. Okay. Here we go. Gotta be careful. They will try to kamikaze you if you shoot them down. Oh, hello. Boom. Alright, we got another wave. Come on, come on. It's only taking a few missiles each, so that's good. Oh, one more. Okay. Alright, not bad. Uh... So, this is actually really important. We can get in here, and then... Uh, maybe it's the other one I have to get inside. There's an artifact or something here. Uh, the ice covering this opening can be melted by extreme heat. Okay. So, there absolutely is a thing over there, but I cannot access it until I can melt ice. Anyway, uh, can I have some power-ups, please? Thank you. Much appreciated. Down we go. Okay. Alright. Looks like we are about to enter... We know this is the research core, so it looks like we're about to enter another uh, research lab of some description. Yep, research lab ether. So let's get ready. Somewhere in here are space pirates. Unfortunately, that's not all that's in here. They have Metroids. That is concerning. That is very, very concerning. Metroid, energy-based parasitic predator. The dominant species of planet SR388, Metroids can suck the life force out of living things. A Metroid would latch onto its prey and drain energy, growing larger as it does. The only way to shake an attached Metroid is to enter Morph Ball mode and lay a bomb. The game does not even pretend to give you a fake hint or, or be subtle about it. It's just like, Metroids are dangerous, and if one gets attached to you, this is what you do. Alright. 
We got that one down. Uh, pirate data. This looks promising. Uh, 10.891.0. The reconstruction of Geoform 187, codenamed Ridley, was recently completed. After his defeat on Zebus, Command ordered a number of metagenic improvements for him. Though aggressive, we were able to implement these changes in a cycle. The metamorphosis was painful, but quite, success quite successful in the end. Early tests indicate a drastic increase in strength, mobility, and offensive capability. Cybernetic modules and armor plating have been added as well. We believe our creation, now called Meta Ridley, will become the mainstay of our security force. A job he will certainly relish. Metroid Containment Fields. Metroids are weak against cold. Uh, that is, quite frankly, one of the only things that Metroids are weak against. And the Metroids that you have seen, these jellyfish-like creatures, are in fact only the youngest, most basic larval form of Metroids. As Metroids grow, they develop a hardened, weapon-resistant carapace, eventually turning into reptile-like super predators. They are exceptionally powerful. And in their latest stages of life, are vulnerable only to internal attacks. Okay, somebody here was still shooting at me. Was that you? Hey, you want to cut that out? Alright, still looking for more data. Oh, no. I've been dreading this one. This is one of the hardest, most annoying to get missile expansions in the entire game. And a lot of that is because of how the camera refuses to stay consistent. Oh, yes. First try. Oh, first try. Okay. Now, I saw an energy tank down here. There it was. Um. One missile. Easily broken. Uh, I do not trust just having a free-floating Metroid here. So we're just... Oh. Okay. Problem solved. Now, is there any pirate data in here? We're looking for red panels. Uh, any... Oh, here we go. New pirate data. Log 11.550.6. Studies of Metroid biology continue, though with limited progress. It seems likely that we will be much more successful using the Metroids for our means rather than trying to reproduce their powers. If they could be adequately tamed, we would have no need of a proper understanding of their metabolism. A small force of disciplined of Metroids could wipe out entire armies, and once we found a way to shield them from cold containment weapons, they will be invincible. Furthermore, if we could harvest the energy they'd consume, we would have a near limitless source of power at our disposal. Yeah! Clean energy! Aside from all the murder. More pirate data. Log 11.420.7. Metroid dissection continues to provide more questions than answers. Our research teams have isolated the energy conduits that run from the invasive twin mandibles to the energy core in the creature's quadripartite nucleus, but the manner in which a Mactroid actually extracts the life force from its prey remains an utter mystery. 
The victim does not lose blood or any other vital fluids, and yet the Metroid extracts energy. Identifying this, enter this energy is our central problem. It takes no physical form, and yet without it, the victim dies. We will continue to research this matter, as the isolation of this life-giving essence could be the key to our ascendance. Very true. That could have tremendous uh, applications, uh, both in terms of weaponry, but also... Um, uh, but also in medicine, I would think. Is there an exit on the bottom floor? Uh, there is. In fact, that is the only exit is on the bottom floor. Okay. I think I... Oh! Okay, that's a new variety. That is an ice beetle. Pop up. Thank you. All right. Boom. Gotcha. Hello! You little jerk. Where are you at? Gotcha. <coughs> well, doesn't this just look like a dark room? Okay. Oh, all right, we got flyers. Nope. There we go. Alright. The creepy music has stopped. And... Central tank control circuit connection terminated. Oh! Okay. So, it looks like I'm going to have to find more of these things. Thermal visor interfaces will be sent to the quarantine area. These visors will be useful for any personnel involved in transport of the unstable cess subject there. This is one of the coolest parts of this game, in my opinion. Um, I have already gone on rather considerably about how immersive this game is. And how good a job it does uh, putting you, you know, inside of Samus's suit and just seeing through her eyes. And I think one of the best ways that it achieves this is through the visor interface. Like, I am clearly looking through a heads up display that Samus herself is looking through. So, when we are able to change the way that the visor sees the world, it's just another layer of immersion, and an absolutely brilliant one at that. I can now see in infrared. Press down to activate visor. Use thermal visor to search for cold and hot objects and hidden wave beam targets. And then... Time for a bit of a blackout. Welcome to the thermal visor. Looks like these are shadow pirates, given the fact that they're only relying on melee attacks. I love being able to see through the vein of the thermal visor. It is so cool. So down here is a white door. I don't know how to get through a white door. So all I can do is get back through that door on the top. But that door lost its power. So, how do I deal with that? First off...
First off, we definitely don't want to deal with any rogue Metroids. Alright, another Metroid on the upper level. You're gonna break out, aren't you? Gotcha. I see one more. Got him. So, you may see something interesting there. If I go back to my normal visor, there's nothing there. Not even anything scannable. But, I can see it. And it is, in fact, the power source for that door which I am now freely able to get back through again. Oh, hold on. Okay, Sentry Drone. Um... I hate these things. I'm just going to get through here as fast as I can. Oh no. Crap. Ah, these uh, I hate those things. Alright, what's up here? Whoa! You little jerk. Okay, that Metroid's definitely gonna be breaking loose. No? Okay. All right, what was shooting at me? That was. That thing's not giving off much of a thermal reading. Okay. So, if you remember, before we came into the research facility, we were in this area, the ruined courtyard. And we weren't able to get through that blue door, specifically because it had no power. So now we have a pretty good hint of how we're supposed to get through there. And yeah, it is still dark as hell in here. Hello! Alright, who else? Who else is coming? Well, okay. Come on, you. That's another one down. Uh. Oh, boy. That's the problem with uh, some of these visors, is that some of them are not the best for seeing certain types of threats. But... Honestly, I just think that's... I just think that's brilliant. I mean, obviously that's part of the design, you know? No. Not everything is going to be easier seen with thermal vision. Just the same way that, you know, not everything is ideally hunted in just normal visual spectrum. I think going through different visors is one of the best things that Metroid Prime does. I really, really do. And, uh, it's something that we will see uh, expanded on later in this very same game um, with another type of visor. And it is expanded on again in um, Metroid Prime 2. Uh, most notably with the Echo Visor in that game. Anyway, though, uh, at this point, it's really just backtracking in order to, uh... Actually, my, my health is fine. I can just... I can just go. 
Ah. Uh, unless I miss a jump. That's fine. I can survive. Damn it. You guys are being real jerks. Look, I've already killed most of your co-workers. How about we just, I don't know, go live and let live? What do you think? Alright, fine. Oh, that was my last missile. Congratulations on successfully depleting my very last missile. Uh, also, that's honestly really concerning now that I stop and think about it. Um... Alright, so this is just down and out of the lab. Crap. Um... I'm actually really regretting... Yeah, I, I'm actually really regretting that I didn't uh, stop in that save room now. Okay. So this is going to go in here. So I just need to cut down through the intro area. Oh, shice. You little ass. There you go. This is gonna be a problem if that thing breaks out. Okay, it looks like it didn't. Get through the door, get through the door. Nope, it's still too dark to see. I'm gonna need some serious visual refreshments before I take on the boss. Oh no. Okay. Uh, it's the research entrance. I just gotta make it through. Shouldn't be a problem. The door's not locked. I just have to reach it. Okay. And we're free. Whoo! Well, that was one hell of an adventure! Um... So, obviously I know where I have to go next. But, uh, first... We're gonna have to power the door. Hmm. Cordite. Okay. So I'm gonna need a super missile to break that. Uh, excuse me. Is there anyone who can, uh, lend me a super missile? <laughs> lend me a missiles? Uh, I don't know. Maybe about a hundred of them. Oh! Uh, parasites. Yeah, they're perfect for farming. Okay. So, I can just go back and forth through these rooms and, uh... Yeah, soak up a bunch of missiles and stuff that way. That seems pretty easy. So, I will get to work on that. And I will see you all on the next one. Guess I have to cut through a few rooms in order to refresh it, huh?